Hello, I'm Paul Pluter and welcome to Paul Pluter Prestige. Today we're reviewing the Cartier Santos. The Cartier Santos is the revolutionary watch which was reintroduced from the original Santos which came out in the 1920s and the it was relaunched in the 70s to compete against Rolexes, two-tone and steel Datejust variants. The Cartier Santos was very revolutionary because it, as a design feature, it used exposed screws to sh highlight a aesthetic pleasure in having screws on the piece. Traditionally in watchmaking, all screws were hidden. The Santos itself was a crossover between formal wear and sports wear with the casualization after the swinging 60s and the risque 70s. The Santos itself was released in the late 70s and became a top seller for Cartier and one of the most faked wristwatches of all time. The Santos itself has led a very long and exuberant life. In modern terms the Santos 100 has replaced the traditional size Santos but that's not to say it, it has been forgotten. The Santos piece itself was available in all steel, steel and gold two-tone combination as well as solid 18 karat yellow gold. The Santos itself has been a significant symbol of success for businessmen and people in the move for many, many decades. The Santos itself was available as a quartz wristwatch or as an automatic. Santos itself has had ladies variants which have proved just as popular as the men's. Many Santoses have been released including a moon phase uh, piece as well as a chronograph Santos. Unfortunately many Santoses have fallen off the investment radar because they contained a quartz movement which has become terminal since the noughties and uh, is rather sad to see. But uh, Santos itself is a very strong brand. Santos has released such products as sunglasses in the Cartier lineup, fountain pens, and even a men's and ladies perfume and aftershave. Santos is a very strong brand and a significant foundation stone of the Cartier range. Santos itself is a model which I believe will come back in its original incarnation. We'll have to wait and see whether my prediction proves right. But Santos itself is a huge, hugely successful model which helped Cartier fight the evils of Rolex's dominance in the marketplace in the late 70s and early 80s. Santos itself proved to be a very popular model incorporating the traditional Roman numerals and antique type dial with a more modern upfront style of wristwatch. Santos's themselves are very very beautiful and uh, I believe they will gain in popularity as people come back to traditional form and function. The Santos itself, its big weak point has been the movement that it's often used. Unfortunately, Cartier, being the jeweler that it is, often used ETA type generic Swiss movements. In later years, this has been replaced by more in-house work, but Cartier really does not have the breeding and history of in-house work like other brands. Santos itself is a brand in the Cartier lineup in itself and I believe it's a model which needs to be thanked for saving Cartier in turbulent times. Santos itself fought the battle against the Datejust. Okay let's have a look at a the score there. Firstly the brand itself I'm going to award in a 7. The model lineup in the Cartier range unfortunately it has slipped a bit in recent years so another 7. The next part I'm going to judge the piece on is the movement which I'm going to give it a six. The overall quality and finish of the piece I'm going to give a seven and the Paul Pluter prestige rating I'm going to give a six. Total the score up 
and we have a healthy 33. I hope you've enjoyed this review.